In-car entertainment systems can be found on almost any new vehicle these days. These not only include features like Bluetooth, but more advanced models of GPS, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay built in. But what if you drive an older car like me? My car is over 15 years old, so it has what would have been considered high-end back in the day, a CD player and FM radio. So I decided to upgrade it with a built-in touchscreen navigation system and media player built on the Asus Tinkerboard. So what do you need for this project? First of all, you need a Tinkerboard, the single board computer from Asus. I really like the versatility of the Tinkerboard, but also the ease of use. It uses completely standard interfaces like HDMI and USB and can run on Android, making compatibility quite simple. You can use something like a Raspberry Pi for this project, but I like the ability to install Android apps on the Tinkerboard, which will come in handy later. Additionally, you will require a touchscreen for the Tinkerboard. I chose this 10-inch 720p display, which I got shipped from China. This requires both a HDMI and USB connection, but is supported by the Tinkerboard without requirement for additional drivers, which is quite handy. In order to mount it in the car, you will need some additional pieces of equipment. First of all, you will require a car cigarette plug to USB adapter. Find one that is rated to at least 2 amps, since the Tinkerboard can become quite power hungry. One thing that I purchased that isn't necessary, but I would recommend, is a GPS receiver. This will allow you to use the Tinkerboard for navigation, and even to track your vehicle if it gets stolen. We'll mount the Tinkerboard itself in this universal car mounting bracket. Most cars have a standardized dashboard bracket size, so I bought this standard size box, which we will be putting the Tinkerboard in and the screen as well. So I'll start by putting this together on my workbench and testing on an AC power adapter. I pre-drilled some mounting holes in the case so that I can screw the Tinkerboard on these feet. Let's move this to the car. The first thing you should do, now that we're trying to mount it in the car, is to take the negative terminal off the car battery, so we don't accidentally short circuit anything whilst we're working in the dashboard. Now every car has a different method of taking apart their dashboard, so check with the manufacturer. If you're routing the cables internally, you should be able to find the power cables inside your dashboard. If you're routing it externally, it's just a matter of finding that 12 volt cigarette plug that's closest to the front. Once you're done, reconnect the negative terminal in your car and start it up. The Tinkerboard should power on with the car now. So what can you do with this mounted Tinkerboard? Well, Google Maps is the first thing that comes to mind, but Google Maps is a bit tricky since you need the Google Play Store to run Google Maps and that's technically not supported by the Tinkerboard. You can install the Play Store, but personally I think that's more effort than it's worth. You're better off using a third party application like here, a Maps app created by Nokia, which does just as well as Google Maps, but saves you the trouble of having to install and then sign into the Play Store. So let's take it for a trial run. It's a bit hard to see, but the screen now shows my car's location and can be used to give navigational instructions. A few things to consider if you want to try a project like this. First of all, messing around with the electricals in your car can be dangerous. Cars run on 12 volt power, so a short circuit probably won't hurt you significantly, but you can damage the car's electricals, or more commonly, blow out a fuse. Now. You might be thinking, why don't you just hook up the Tinkerboard to the amplifier so you can use it as a music player as well? Well you can, and if you have an amplifier with an RCA input at the back, it's quite easy to do. That way you can receive verbal navigational instructions or run a music player app like Spotify, or do just about anything that you can legally do on Android whilst driving. That's what I did for a short while, but unfortunately whilst I was doing some tinkering, I caused a short circuit which blew out a fuse in my car, but also took out the audio chip in the Tinkerboard, so it's no longer able to put out audio out of its headphone jack. 
Audio over HDMI still works, but I don't think I'll be keeping my slightly damaged tinkerboard in my car anytime soon. So I really hope you found this project interesting. And perhaps you're willing to give it a shot and have a bit more luck with your tinkerboard than I did with mine. I really love the versatility of the tinkerboard and I think I'll continue making videos of use cases for this tiny computer as long as people are interested and maybe some of these projects have inspired to do something of your own.